Hi guys, my name is Doc Shell. Thank you so much for joining me on Dr. Test Prep. Remember that we are using the Desmos calculator and I already had jumped the gun and done it, but you gotta make sure when you go to the test practice calculator, you choose assessment and you choose the College Board PSAT SAT calculator. Um, we are doing unit two, lesson one, um, which is solving linear equations and inequalities. It is unit two, lesson one in my program, as well as unit two, lesson one in Khan Academy. Remember what makes mine a little bit different than Khan is we use the Desmos calculator to do the problems. Um, if you did buy my book on Amazon or from school, uh, we're on page 20. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna show you the longer way to do this, and this is how Khan would show you how to do it. Um, first, you would subtract 2y from both sides because we wanna isolate the variable on one side of the equation. Next, you would uh, move the constant by adding four to both sides. And we get, um, oops, I don't know why I wrote three y there. Um, and we would get y equals 11. So we know that the correct answer is letter A. Let me show you how you can do the same problem using the Desmos calculator. All you do is type it into Desmos. So I'm gonna type in 2y plus seven equals 3y minus four. And we get a line. Now the reason why we get a line is because there's no mention of x, but notice that no matter where I move my mouse on my line, my y value is 11. And so I often tell students when you do one variable equations like what we're doing on this lesson, just click where it connects the axis and read the number. So here it's very clear that the second coordinate which is the y value, because if we think about having x and y, and they give us 0, y, oops, sorry, 0, 11, well, that's our answer. y is 11. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This time, um, I will show you one more time the longer way to do this. So we would first do the distribution. So we would do 2 times 3x, which is 6x. And then we would do 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. This is probably like an 8th grade level question. We would subtract 5x from both sides. And then we would have to add 8 to both sides. And we get x equals 14. Here's our answer. Now, I'm guessing the College Board is not going to give you questions like this. This is what is very similar to what they have on Khan Academy. What I would bet is they might say, what is 5x? So first you find the x, and then you have to do a substitution to get the answer. So let's, let's do the modified problem too. So in Desmos, all you would do is you type it in exactly as it's written. Now, I have used Desmos for so long that I use the keyboard shortcuts all the time. But the other option you have on the test air and when you're practicing along with me is the keyboards on the bottom. So you can also just use the mouse. So when I do this, I'm like, wait, I don't have an answer. Why don't I have an answer? You do have an answer. You just got to scroll out. And just like the previous problem, all of these Y values still have 14 as the X. So we know that X equals 14. Now let's pretend we're doing the made up problem I just did and they said, okay, simplify this expression and then tell me what 5x is. Watch what you do. You go over here and you do five times 14. And the answer would be 70, okay? So I, th I think they're gonna probably add another step because you can use the decimals for so much. Um, but again, it's the same idea. Let's look at how it works for inequalities. With inequalities, we have to remember that any time that we divide by a negative number, we have to switch the orientation from less than to greater than or greater than to less than, unless we use the graphing calculator. So we're just going to literally type it in as written. 3y minus 7 is greater than 2y plus 5. And notice what I have, right? So the only thing that we have to do is like now we have to interpret what this means. And so this is a great thing. To, um, if you have a paper and pencil or you have my book that you, I want you to write this down, I need you to remember this. When we have this symbol, I'm going to use zero as our standard number. This means x is bigger than zero. Okay. If we have a line underneath it, we're going to have x is bigger, technically greater than is the term, or equal to zero. 
and it's going to be a solid line. If there's no line underneath, it's going to be a dotted line. If it goes the other way, then we have X is less than zero or smaller than. And then we could also have X is less than or equal to. Okay, and a similarly, it's dotted line if there's no line underneath the symbol and it's a solid line if there is. So now that we know that information, let's take a look at the graph. We see that it's a dotted line. So all of the answer choices already have no like or equal to sign underneath. But I just wanted you to learn that for the future problems because we're going to do inequality several more times. Then look at the number. Now remember, because it's one variable, I like to just click the axis because it's easiest to see the number. We know the number is 12. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, why is it 12? Because I typed it in wrong. Now we double check our work and we see that it's X or Y is greater than eight. Did you notice how I was confused? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes and it's totally okay. When you're taking the test, if you see an answer and it's not there, it's probably because you typed something in wrong like I did. I typed in a five instead of a one. But we can clearly see that we have Y values that are bigger than eight. So it would be choice A. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one we're going to do the same way. I'm going to do it a little bit faster and not explain as much. I think I was jumping between the two problems. 4X minus 7. I like to use the keys, so I'm going to put the greater than and then type an equal sign. And Desmos knows to make it then a greater than or equal sign. Um, 2X plus 5, but you can also use the keys on the bottom. Notice how this is a solid line. So because it's a solid not line, I know I'm going to have X because X is in the equation. I'm going to have a solid line. And then I have to decide what's my key number. Well, my key number is 6. So I have the shaded region is correct. X values that are greater than or equal to 6. Choice A again. Wow, there's a lot of A's on this page. All right. This is Doc Shell. Thank you so much for watching about Unit 2, Lesson 1, the basic questions. Um, in the next video, you'll be able to watch Unit 2, Lesson 1, the questions that are just a little bit harder. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, keep being awesome. Bye, guys.